Well, friends, I just want to spend a few minutes with you in the word of the Lord, uh, just to continue us growing in our walk with Christ. If you've been with us in person in the last few weeks, we've been going through a series on Galatians. I've, I've decided to put a little temporary halt on that until after Easter, and we'll pick up that series again, uh, most likely when we gather back together in person. Uh, but this morning, I just want us to think a little bit about this kind of moment we're in and, and how we want to show up in this moment that we're in. You see, have you ever noticed that anytime we're going through significant uh, historical moments, there's a couple of kind of catchphrases or catchwords that always kind of come to the surface? As we're in the midst of this coronavirus, this COVID-19, um, we've heard a few different catchphrases. Um, the word unprecedented comes up, that this is an unprecedented circumstances. You've probably heard that one a few times in the news. The other word that I've kind of clung to and, and heard quite a bit the last few days is the word chaos. Chaos, anything from um, what it's like going to Myers right now and trying to find um, toilet paper um, to all the things on our news feeds on Facebook to um, trying to figure out what it's like to do life in this situation. The word I think that a lot of people are thinking are, is, is the word chaos. You know, when I, when I think of the word chaos, one of the pictures that comes to mind for me is um, if you've ever gone to like an amusement park or Michigan's Adventures or maybe even a carnival before, um, they have these rides where there's like three, um, three kind of pods, I guess you could say, off the main center point. And on those three pods, there's normally like three seats that are in a, kind of in a circle. And so those three pods that are, face, are on the outside, they kind of start spinning one way toward following each other. And then the whole device as a whole begins to spin. And so not only is the whole device spinning, but each of the pods are spinning and it's just kind of this craziness is moving and flowing and it's just chaos. I think in fact, if I remember right at Michigan Adventure, that's what they call that, right? Is chaos or, or something to that effect. What does chaos look like for you? Maybe it's thinking of the ocean or, or like Michigan on a really windy day and seeing those huge waves out there. Maybe it's a time in your life that you remember oh so closely. What do you think of when you hear the word chaos? You see, the Bible talks about the word chaos too, and it actually talks about it pretty quickly on. In fact, in Genesis chapter 1, which is the first book, in the first chapter of the first book, so the very beginning of your Bible, in the second verse, it talks about chaos. You see, the Christian narrative, scriptures, they know a thing or two about chaos. The people of God know a thing or two about chaos. And in the midst of chaos, we are a people who need to be reminded of who we are and whose we are. So we're going to look at that a little bit today. So this morning, I want to invite us to hear these words from, from the creation account, from Genesis chapter 1. I'm going to be reading verses 1 through 5, and, and listen for these words of chaos with me. It says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Did you catch the chaos in this passage? You see, in verse 2, Genesis gives us this picture of chaos. It talks about the earth in particular. And in, in, in this translation, it called it formless and void. Formless and void. If you look in, in the Hebrew of that, it, it really goes back to this idea of, of, of chaos. Or, or another way you could, you could translate it is without order. Without structure. I think, friends, that we are in a time much like that. 
a time of lacking order, a, a time of not knowing what to do. I know as a pastor, I'm trying to figure out how to lead this church alongside other leaders and their staff. But none of those have experienced leading a church through a pandemic. We are in chaotic times. Our kids are on basically a four-week spring break. Three weeks of mandated closure and then spring break happens. Parents are, are trying to figure out what are they going to do with their kids these next few weeks. And at the same time, they still have to pay their bills. They still have to make a mortgage payment. So they can't just stay at home and do nothing. It's chaos. Some kids are wondering where they're going to get their next meal at because they rely on the school for breakfast and lunch. And now we're grateful that Hudsonville schools and others have, have stepped up to the plate to help these kids, but there still are some kids that are wondering that question. There's some adults wondering that question too. Some of our elderly are feeling the pain of, of feeling isolated and, and, and told to stay home that they shouldn't go out because they're at high risk of getting the coronavirus. We live in a chaotic time. What comes to mind when you think of chaos? As I was thinking about chaos a little bit more this week, I was reminded of a story of Jesus and his disciples. It's a story that you're probably familiar with. But it it's a story of, of Jesus, and, and, and he falls asleep on a boat in the midst of some rough waters on the Sea of Galilee. If you need a, a refresher this morning, or, or maybe you haven't heard that story before, let me, let me just read it to you. We find this story in, in Luke's Gospel, chapter 22, and I'm going to be reading through verse 25. One day... Jesus got into a boat with his disciples, and he said to them, Let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they set out, and as they sailed, he fell asleep. And a windstorm came down on the lake, and they were filling with water and were in danger. And they went and woke him, and saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he awoke and rebuked the wind and the raging waves, and they ceased, and there was calm. He said to them, Where is your faith? And they were afraid, and they marveled, saying to one another, Who then is this, that he commands even the winds and waters? And they obey him. The waters were chaos for the disciples. Can you imagine being in a little wooden boat? It's not a big boat. It's not a ship. It's not powered by a gas motor. Maybe it's 20, 25 feet long. Maybe six, eight foot wide, something like that. It's not a big boat. And yet they're out in the middle of the Sea of Galilee with huge waves. And you have to remember that these disciples, they were like professional fishermen, many of them. They had seen waves, they had seen storms on the sea before, but yet this sea, this storm was so strong. There was so much chaos in that sea at that moment. They just completely panicked. And what could they do? What were they to do in the midst of the chaos? If it wasn't chaotic enough with just the water going crazy, the leader, the one they were looking for, for answers and for wisdom, he was sleeping. He was sleeping in the midst of the chaos. So the disciples went and, and they woke up Jesus and, and in the midst of their chaos, they wondered why, Jesus, how in the wide world are you still sleeping? Are you ignoring us? Do you not care about the chaos in our world? Do you not care about the chaos in the sea, in the boat? Maybe some of us are saying that too if, in our own lives. Whether it's the coronavirus or other chaos going on in our lives, we say, God, do you not care about the chaos going on? 
And Jesus replied with a simple word. He said, turn to the waves and the wind, and he said, peace, be still. And everything was calm. You see, God has a way of doing that. In the midst of chaos, God has a way of speaking a word and changing things. If you look back at our creation account that we read a few moments ago from Genesis, there was chaos. And then God spoke a word, and light and dark was formed. And God said it was good. Eventually, all of earth, including humanity, was created. Just by a word. And God said it was good. You see, I don't believe that God designed us to live in chaos. God designed for us to live in shalom. But the reality is, is that we are going to experience chaos in our life. So you might be wondering, what is shalom? You see, shalom uh, comes to us. It's a, it's a Hebrew word that we find in the Old Testament that our Jewish brothers and sisters um, use a lot. And, and I think the closest word we can, uh, the closest thing we have in our English dictionary for the word shalom is the word peace. But oftentimes when we think of the word peace, we think of uh, the absence of war, the absence of violence as peace. Um, but shalom is so much more than that, friends. Shalom is everything living and being the way that God designed it to live and to be. And you see, the reality of shalom is that we're never going to fully experience shalom until Jesus comes back into this world to make all things new. But here's the good news, my friends. As I believe that when Jesus came into this world and died on the cross, he ushered in eternity. He ushered in glimpses of shalom. Yes, we're not going to fully experience eternity. Yes, we're not going to fully experience shalom until Jesus comes again. But I believe there are glimpses of shalom all around us. This week, I, I glimpsed shalom a few times. I, I glimpsed shalom when a few kids stopped in um, to the office to say hello and just to chat about life. I seen a smile on their face that lit a smile on mine. To me, that was a glimpse of shalom. I've heard stories this week of teachers giving up their time and, and their talent while they're off to, to make sure kids have food to eat. To me, that's a glimpse of shalom. I've heard stories this week of, of people um, connecting with the elderly through letters and emails and phone calls. To me, that's a glimpse of shalom. You see, shalom looks like heaven. Shalom looks like people having a belonging, having an identity rooted in God. People knowing that they are loved and that they are not forgotten. Shalom is a place where everyone has food, where injustice doesn't reign, but God's justice reigns supreme. So I want to wonder with us today, what would it look like for us to be people of shalom? People who, like Jesus, said, peace be still, and the waters were calm. That was shalom. When the world was created as it was designed to be, that was shalom. Now again, we're not going to see full shalom until Jesus comes again. But I think we are invited into the story of shalom. We are invited to be about what God is doing to bring shalom into this world. So I wonder how we can be about that project, even in the midst of the coronavirus. How can you be a person of shalom? Who in your life needs a, a phone call to be reminded that they are loved? Who do you know in your midst that really desperately could use a meal tonight? Who do you know in your midst that just needs a friend right now? I want to invite you, friends. I want to invite us to be people of shalom. 
See, last week, if you were with us, I, I invited us to not be people of fear, but to be people of hope. And this week, I want to invite us to not be people of chaos, but to be people of shalom. Let's resist as much as possible that temptation to be people of chaos, to get caught up in the chaos of this moment. And let's instead try to find ourselves caught up in shalom. Caught up in what God is doing to redeem and reconcile and make all things new in this world. I think, friends, if we can be people of shalom in a moment like this, the world is going to take notice. Because the world desperately, desperately needs shalom right now. This world desperately needs the shalom that only Jesus can offer them. This world desperately needs the shalom that, that only Jesus can offer to you and me because of what he did on the cross. And friends, if maybe you're listening to this video this morning and, and you're realizing that you don't have that shalom in your life, you don't have that peace in your life because you don't have a relationship with Jesus, I want to invite you into a relationship with Jesus. You see, Jesus is extending his hand to you this morning, inviting you into his shalom, inviting you to be about, about his process of bringing about shalom into this world. And he wants to invite you into that place where you'll get to experience full shalom when he comes again. And friends, it's not complicated. We don't have to work and do a whole bunch of certain things in order to deserve that. In fact, God gives us salvation as a gift of grace. Not out of what we do, but because of what Jesus did. Jesus instead just asks us to repent and believe. So friends, will you repent and believe this week? Will you repent of the ways of chaos and believe the ways of shalom? The ways in which God is working in this world to make all things new. Will you surrender to God in that way? And if that's something you want to do, I encourage you to reach out to myself or, or someone else at the church or maybe someone else that you know who's a follower of Jesus and, and let's have a conversation about what that would look like. So friends, as you go into this week, let's go and be people of shalom, not people of chaos. That's who you were created to be. You were created to be a person of shalom. I love you, friends, and until we see you again, may God bless you. And keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.